Hi everyone. I want to talk about prevention of preterm birth. If you are pregnant or someone around you is pregnant or you're planning to be pregnant or you were pregnant in the past but unfortunately you have preterm birth, well, you can sit back. Let's go. We'll talk about how the use of progesterone can help. It's not meant for everybody, but by the time we are done, you might not need to ask anybody any question on that. So with that, let's go. Prevention of preterm birth, the use of progesterone. It's not only progesterone that we could use to prevent preterm birth, and not in all preterm births that progesterone would have been able to save the situation. But the next slice will show how progesterone could be useful. So let's go. By definition, preterm birth is delivery of the product of conception in less than 37 weeks gestational age. Some will choose less than 36 weeks gestational age. Progesterone is simply progestational. The name is coined from that. It means it's a strong supporter of pregnancy. So progesterone is good for preterm birth prevention but we have to identify the cause of the preterm birth. For example, if it is as a result of cervical incompetency, short service, or chromosomal anomalies, and so on, we need to identify that before you know, seeking the help with the use of progesterone. The reason is not all preterm birth can actually use progesterone to prevent it. No, you can use progesterone in all cases. Normally, the corpus luteum will produce progesterone for maintenance of pregnancy from the onset, that is from fertilization, up to about nine weeks gestational age. I repeat, the corpus luteum is expected to be producing progesterone for maintenance of pregnancy from fertilization up to nine weeks gestational age. That is going to hold the product of conception you know, from implantation you know, firmly in the uterus and that will prevent spontaneous abortion or miscarriage. Placenta should be producing the progesterone beyond ninth week. Okay, you can see, perfectly arranged. Corpus luteum will start, then when the corpus luteum regression has occurred or about to, placenta will have come in place to take up the job. The reason is progesterone must be available to hold the pregnancy down in the uterus. Progesterone keeps the fetus intact in the uterus by maintaining the uterine cuisines. Functional activity of progesterone would decline towards labor period. Okay, let me explain that. You know, that's what you call oxytocin, and we are talking about progesterone right now. Progesterone we hold the pregnancy intact in the uterus until the time of labor. So at that time, the level or the functional activity of progesterone will be declining towards the labor period, while that of oxytocin will be rising. I think you got it. So oxytocin will keep rising until the product of conception is out. But that of progesterone will be dropping. So you could see that it's going to balance. So progesterone dropping, oxytocin rising, then we enter into labor. That is why when 
oxytocin level is low, we need to add that is documentation. I'm not going to go into that right now. So we're just talking about progesterone. Maybe later on when I make separate uh, presentation on labor and factors that will enhance or that could help, then you get you know, those facts. Okay, let's move on. It prevents preterm rupture of membrane. Okay and can also alter the immune response. Indications. Indications for progesterone supplementation to prevent preterm birth. A, singleton pregnancy. Singleton pregnancy means the woman is pregnant with only one fetus. And you check the service, there's normal cervical length. And the woman had prior preterm birth in the past, but with only one fetus. So if you have those characteristics, then you can go ahead to give adult progesterone caprate, 250 milligram IM every week, starting from the 16th week of gestational age. And you're going to continue that every week until 36 weeks gestational age. The reason why you don't want to go beyond that is you don't want um, a situation where labor onset will not come on time and then you'll be dealing with post-data pregnancy because post-data pregnancy will have its own account of possible complications. So you monitor the cervical length. If it's less than or equal to 25 millimeters, you can give cyclage. That is, if the cervical length is short, you give cervical cyclage. So you give progesterone, you give cervical cyclage if the length of the cervix is less than 25 millimeters. Another group, the woman is having single fetus, okay? In the past, she had twins and she had a preterm bed with twins, but the cervical length is fine. At this time, she's pregnant now with just one fetus. So you can give adult progesterone, caprate 250 milligram IM every week. From 16th week gestational age, you continue on to 36 week gestational age. You monitor cervical length, if it's less than or equal to 25 millimeters, quickly give the cyclage. Group three, the woman is carrying single fetus, single teen pregnancy. Never had preterm birth in the past, but the service is short, it's less than or equal to 20 millimeters, then you have to give the progesterone suppository, okay? Not IM this time. Give progesterone suppository 90 to 200 milligram per vagina at the hour of sleep overnight. So that it's going to rest there. And you can start from diagnosis until 36 weeks. Remember, I've been saying before you give adult progesterone 250 milligram every week from 16 week. That is not the case here. Here, from the time you make that diagnosis, you'll be given the suppository progesterone until 36 weeks. Or you may choose 100 milligram micronized progesterone vagina tablet, or you choose 8% vagina gel containing micronized progesterone for those. Group D, they have normal cervical length, but they are carrying multiple pregnancies, so two or three, twins or triplet, but never had preterm bed before. Remember, because they are having multiple pregnancy, they could have preterm birth. But 
no progesterone, no cervical sacrage. Why? No prior history of recent birth, and the cervical length is normal. So the fact that they are prone to preterm bed as a result of multiple pregnancy doesn't mean we have to load them with progesterone and be given cyclage. No, no progesterone, no cervical cyclage. Group E, they have multiple pregnancy, like twins or triplets, and they had prior preterm birth. So you treat just like group A. The alternative is natural progesterone administered vaginally. Group F, they have twins and the service is short. All we are going to give here is vaginal progesterone, no sacrilege. Group G, this is the situation where we are not going to give progesterone if we have returned premature rupture of membrane because the membrane is already ruptured, okay? Or there's positive fetal fibronectin test, which means the likelihood of going into preterm labor is very high. Under these situations, no progesterone. And with that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. So we've been able to go through the different groups that might use or not use progesterone and cyclage or progesterone alone or cyclage alone or progesterone IM or progesterone suppository. If you think you are still not getting the exact picture, just repeat this video from beginning to the end, and it should be fine. If you have any comments, you can leave at the comment section. With that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get all my presentations immediately they are published. I appreciate it.